Our next student is Matthew Brown. Matt is a first-year student of the DSPT. A recent graduate of theology and philosophy at Holy Cross College in South Bend, Indiana, Matthew is interested in Catholic social thought, ecclesiology, and the particular concentration of his program to date is sexual ethics. At this time, Matthew intends to apply his study and formation at the DSPT to Catholic secondary education, journeying with other students toward a more complete understanding of their relationship to Christ, especially in relation to the modern world. Please welcome Matthew Brown. Since its promulgation in 1965, Gaudiumet Spes has been criticized as presenting an overly optimistic and utopian vision of the church in its relationship to the modern world. For one critic, the Constitution was an endeavor to dissolve the church into the world, and for many displayed a naive confidence in human nature, lacking a theology of sin and appreciation for the role of grace and faith in the Christian life while overemphasizing human effort. Its Kennedy-era optimism, for one prominent critic, conceived of a zero hour in which everything would begin again, and all those things that had formerly been done badly would now be done well. Despite these criticisms of Gaudium et Spes, it remains that there cannot be an interpretation of the church that is without consideration of its cultural and historical context. The universal church is one that is embodied and thoroughly human. The gospels tell us that Christ built his church on the person, Peter, and entrusted his bride to the leadership of an apostolic succession that has persisted through the ages. De Verbum affirms in its theology of revelation a personal relationship with the historical God-man, Jesus Christ, in the soul of the believer. Pope Francis continues even today to speak of the embodiment of God, who, in his words, travels the paths of history and shares in the life of humanity. The opening line of Gaudium et Spes affirms the embodiedness of the church and the great familiarity the baptized, us, and what we share with the world, that their joys and hopes, sorrows and anxieties, are like an experience to those of their earthly brothers and sisters. The Constitution makes a departure from the skepticism that held the church captive from its institutional mission for much of the 19th and 20th centuries in imitation of Christ in the Gospels, it conceives of a church not so much driven by ideals, but by relationships with people. In the second chapter, entitled Human Community, the Constitution produces a vision of the church that is interdependent of and is willing to serve the world and its societies. Christian mission of conversion to the Gospel is tied to its service therein until the eschatological kingdom where the church and world will finally be one. Gaudium et Spes marks a return to the fundamental biblical teachings of the good life and Christ's insistence to be not afraid and baptize the nations in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The human or embodied Ecclesiology of Gaudium et Spes is relevant even today and has been advanced by Pope Francis in the last decade and a half as he e echoes a call for a culture of encounter and dialogue between the church and world. The encounter Francis speaks of is chiefly imagined in the parable of the Good Samaritan and is realized in not just seeing but looking not just hearing, but listening. <clears throat> not just passing people by, but stopping with them. Not just saying, 
What a shame, poor people. But allowing yourself to be moved with compassion and then to draw near and say, do not weep, and to give at least a drop of life. An encounter with a stranger without reservation or prejudgment is an encounter and imitation of Jesus Christ himself. And with eyes of mercy and compassion, who, with eyes of mercy and compassion, gazed upon the downtrodden, the tax collector and prostitute, and invited himself into their own homes to invite them to a fuller, that is, Christian life. Francis's culture of encounter is a form of evangelization Jesus participated in. It was done not by pressure or proselytism, but by the attraction emanating from one's very life. It is a culture born out of joy in response to receiving and professing the Christian message of salvation and freedom. The kind of embodied faith articulated in Gaudium et Spes and furthered by Francis has drawn me as a baptized Christian and student here at DSPT to go out into the world and encounter my unbaptized neighbors in charity. This past semester, I took up a position here in Berkeley as a bartender. Moving from the homey rural setting of South Bend, Indiana in May, this new form of work has been a rush of emotion for me. I have been at times unnerved by my workmates and felt alienated at the bar, but at other times, a part of a larger community. Where some might see the profession of a bartender as in dichotomy to the Christian life, I see it as an opportunity to encounter the stranger, the person who I seemingly have nothing in common with, and to make spaces for intentional conversation and appreciation. I host a real concern for my coworkers and customers, some having even become friends, who time and time again accompany me to Mass now and community at the local Catholic worker. Contrary to the critics of Gaudium et Spes, his ecclesiology, who fear a church without distinctions, I have found that encounter with those unlike me at the bar and elsewhere has only brought me to greater confidence and clarity in my own vocation as a baptized Christian. Gaudium et Spes remains today a document that does not leave its readers indifferent. That's for sure. It stirs them. It has stirred me to go confidently into the world as Christ would, to be not afraid, and seek out those who have not, who have not encountered the happiness I have in relationship with Jesus Christ. Thank you.